Welcome to Nurse Farm in Westboro, Massachusetts. I'm David Nurse, a member of the eighth generation of nurses on the farm. Our farm was established in 1722 and has been continually owned and operated by members of the Nurse family ever since. Being only five years younger than the town and the oldest remaining farm in the town, we are an important part of Westboro's history. The farm's history has its origin in the witchcraft hysteria that gripped Massachusetts in 1692. It was on July 19 when our ancestor, Rebecca Nurse, a 71-year-old grandmother, was hanged for witchcraft in Salem. Her house, located in what is now the town of Danvers, is a museum to that unfortunate time in our history. The following year, Rebecca's youngest son, Benjamin, with his wife and child, left Salem and joined his aunt Sarah and other families involved in the Salem witchcraft hysteria on what became known as Salem Plain in Framingham. It was Benjamin's sons, William and Ebenezer, both born in Framingham, who left that town and established this farm in 1722. The farm was originally in Shrewsbury. It was part of a parcel of land that some years later became included in the town of Westboro. The 1830 Nahum Fisher map of Westboro marks the farm's location on what was then called the New County Road with the label B-N-U-R-S-E. That was my great, great, great grandfather, Benjamin Nurse. The label D-N-U-R-S-E refers to his son, David Nurse. That portion of the farm is still known as Uncle David's. Sometime in the 1840s, the spelling of the family name was changed from N-U-R-S-E to N-O-U-R-S-E. The pronunciation of the name did not change. Today, the farm consists of 140 acres of farmland with lots of stone walls, surrounding a 3.5 acre homestead plot, which holds the farmhouse, barns, and farm store. The best farmland is the 75 acres on the south side of Nurse Street. The 65 acres on the north side is mostly pasture and woodlot. The farmhouse is a traditional center hall colonial that dates back to 1754, with the newest part built in 1813. The main barn was built during the Civil War. You were in the barn's hayloft, where, when I was a child on the farm, hay wagons would be wheeled in and loose hay unloaded into the hay mouths on either side. This portion of the barn would be full of hay to be consumed by the farm's dairy cows during the winter. The most recent addition to the barns was the cow barn, constructed in the late 1940s. It was designed to house two lines of milking cows tied up by stanchions and facing outward. Hay and grain were distributed from the sides into the cow's mangers. A center aisle permitted pneumatic milking machines to be moved from cow to cow. The farm has the advantage of a varied terrain. It lies in a valley formed by Nurse Brook, one of the headwaters of the Assabet River. The brook flows north into Mill Pond, part of the Sudbury, Assabet, Concord, or Suasco drainage area, and provides the farm with a reliable source of water. There are two ponds on the upper part of the brook. The larger pond is formed by an old concrete dam. The smaller pond lies above it, filled by springs. Irrigation from the main pond is essential to the farm's crops in dry seasons. Our land has lots of rocks. That has given us an ample supply with which to build stone walls, which still crisscross the property today. Unfortunately, the rocks also made our fields difficult to cultivate. Early wrought iron paws would break on the rocks and were difficult to repair. In the 1840s, Joel Nurse, a gifted blacksmith, developed the Nurse Eagle Plow using cast iron for construction. A revolution at the time, this cast iron plow was better able to handle the rocky New England soil and could be more easily repaired with manufactured parts. It was the best-selling plow in the country for over a decade, and an example is included in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. 
Although this is the 300th anniversary of Westboro, it is instructive to look back 100 years to the time of the town's 200th anniversary. As it turns out, 1917 was not only a significant year for the town, but also for Nurse Farm, as it brought three significant changes. In many respects, the farm looked then much as it does now. The view from the hill on the west would have been the same, except that then there were also two silos behind the barn, as well as a corn crib and an ice house down by the pond. However, there were significant differences in how people lived and worked. These were horse and buggy days, when most travel or farm work required harnessing horses and hitching them to a carriage or wagon. It was not until two years later, in 1919, that my grandfather, Arthur Mary of Nurse, who then owned and operated the farm, would buy his first automobile. While there was an electric trolley line built in 1901 running along Nurse Street into town, electrification of houses in rural areas like this was far in the future. Oil or kerosene lamps were needed for house lighting. However, this changed in August 1917 when my grandfather purchased an electric lighting plant and then wired the house and barns for electricity. This was a major step forward, making the life on the farm much easier for the family. The farm's central activity in 1917 was the production of milk. It had been a dairy farm at least since the Civil War. As a result, most of the work on the farm was focused upon the feeding and care of its cattle. Traditionally, milk was done by hand. This was time-consuming work. However, this changed in 1917 when my grandfather bought a Sharples milking machine. It was designed to apply suction to the cow's teats using a pulsator. This milking machine significantly reduced the need for hand milking of the farm's 23 cows, and thus the number of workers necessary for the process. A third change came in August of 1917 when my grandfather bought his first tractor. I'm not sure of its make, but it probably was a Fordson. It was good for heavy pulling, and the farm subsequently was able to reduce its number of horses from four to two. The 1917 advances of electric lighting, a milking machine, and a tractor made life on the farm much easier, but change came slowly in the decades that followed. It was not until after the Second World War that the pace of change became rapid. In 1949, we were using a hay loader to load loose hay that had been dried in the field in front of the house. It is a three-generation effort. I, at age 12, am driving the tractor. My grandfather is on the front of the wagon using a pitchfork to stack the hay. My father is at the rear of the wagon using a pitchfork to receive the hay from the hay loader. This use of a hay loader was a significant advance from loading loose hay from the ground with pitchforks. Then, within three years, we were baling our hay. This hay baling operation was a significant advance from the 1949 loading of loose hay, employing more specialized equipment. However, it still required a number of workers. The trend since then has been to increase the use of machinery and reduce the number of workers required for farm operations. My father, who came back to the farm after his graduation from college in 1932, saw the full swing from the use of hand labor and draft animals that existed when he was a child to the substantial mechanization of farming that now prevails. It was he who, with assistance from my brothers Timothy Merriam Nurse and Jonathan Willard Nurse, brought about the shift of the farm's business in the late 1870s from dairy to the production of small fruits and vegetables, reacting to the increased desire of consumers for fresher, locally grown food. Starting with one field of strawberries, the farm steadily added plantings of strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, and other small fruits. In the mid-1980s, the building of a farm store made it possible to sell directly to consumers. My brother John then began to diversify the crops we could grow and sell to include sweet corn, heirloom tomatoes, peppers, kale, lettuce, squash, and many others. He also introduced products manufactured from our crops, jams and pies being among the favorites. Much of what we do is done with machines, but human hands are still required for planting and harvesting of many of our crops. Almost a decade ago, John started our Community Supported Agriculture, or CSA, program. Consumers buy a share of the farm's production at the start of the growing season, and in exchange receive weekly distributions of food during the harvest. The dairy cows are gone. In their place, we have a small herd of Hereford beef cattle. They keep the pastures trim, 
and in the future may provide meat for sale at the farm store or through the CSA. Since 1981, the farmland has been subject to an Agricultural Preservation Restriction, or APR. That is the result of our agreement with the Commonwealth and the town not to develop the land for commercial or residential use. This APR is to ensure that the land remains a source of agricultural production for the years to come, and the family remains committed to continuing the task of keeping the land productive. Having been established in 1722, only five years after the town was incorporated, Nurse Farm will have its own 300th anniversary in 2022. In the meantime, the farm continues to provide a strong link between the town's past, present, and future. I hope you enjoy your visit to the farm and that you'll come back again soon.